Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about how model states in Inventor 2022 are replacing the levels of detail that you're used to using for large assembly management. I'd like to start off by reviewing where we are with 2021 or the functionality available in 2021. So in 2021, I have a, a representations folder, I have levels of detail, I have a master level of detail and some standard ones underneath it. And then I have a custom one called using subs. If I activate that one, it's going to want me to save it. I'll save it. And then with that one active, you'll see I have these two vessels here that are in, uh, substitutes that are taking their place and kind of refreshing your memory about the large assembly management side of things down here in the bottom right hand corner i've got a hundred or i'm sorry eleven hundred and two total components and 449 unique files open if i go back to my master i've got 1486 total components and 454 unique files open now let's jump to 2022 and see how model states now control this. So now I've opened the same model in Inventor 2022. If I look at my representations folder, you'll see that levels of detail are completely gone, that we still have the view and position, but levels of detail are gone. They've replaced them with model states. Automatically, any level of detail I have in this file in 2021 will be automatically converted into a model state in 2022. So here's my using subs, just to kind of refresh the memory of the unique files, 1486 and 454. Activate the using subs, either by double clicking or right clicking and saying activate. And now I've got 1102 and 456. Just to show you how the substitute level of detail works now with model states, if I open up one of these files, I can go to my model states master. You can see that I've got my master and the substitutes folder is there, but it's empty. I'll right click and say new substitute and I'll use the simplify workflow, which is pretty much the same thing as the shrink wrap was before, just a, a little bit of a different interface here and they've gone to incorporating the presets as well. So I'm going to kind of just pick through here. I'm going to leave all of the the model state view and position the same. I'm going to come down to where I can include and exclude components. So I'm going to enable all occurrences. Let's say I want to get rid of some of these components around here. It's going to by clicking them with the all uh, occurrences turned on. I'm going to remove those. This is similar to how the shrink wrap command worked. It's almost identical to shrink wrap. And then uh, down here on the output, I can name the template to use, name the file, and pretty much all the same settings I had in shrink wrap. So I'm going to go ahead and just calculate this, save it. So now here's my substitute. You can see it lists as a substitute. So I'm going to switch back to, I switch back to my master. I'm going to rename this one subs or sub like I like to do. So now I'll save this. I'll return back to my top level assembly. So I have the using subs model state enabled. It's using the other two substitutes on this last vessel here. I'll expand it out. Here's the substitute, the sub, I'll activate it. And now we've got a further simplified assembly. So this pretty much works exactly how Levels of Detail did. The one thing that I saw as I was working through this though, is it doesn't need to save between jumping between Levels of Detail or between model states, just like Levels of Detail did. Um, so that is actually a kind of a great uh, addition here that also seems to get rid of that one quirk where 
Sometimes you couldn't save a level of detail because the software thought you were editing another one. That was something that kind of bothered me for, for years. I don't see that. I hadn't seen that as much, but I don't see it at all with model states, at least a little bit that I've used it. So it seems to be a pretty seamless transition. Uh, model states are capable of a lot more, and I'll probably dig into them more here in the future as I, I learn more about them. But this was the one workflow I do a lot of. I actually teach a class in it. I wanted to make sure that I understood the differences and the transition into it. And it actually seems to be a pretty seamless transition. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.